Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Time Media, and today we've got a new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM. I was a little behind on stuff this week because I was at a show, and so hopefully there'll be some fun content that comes out of that. Here's a couple sneak peeks, bam, 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 and that's all you get, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. So let's hop into it. We've got a full dapper week, which means there is more than 30 songs and a song from all five major categories that I want to talk about this week, because we will start with the trash category, songs that I thought were trash. Remember, this is just my opinion, uh, but we've got David got a girl on couch and Bill and Ted with man in finance. This is the fastest I've ever put a song in trash. Hands down. I saw the title and then the heard that the melody was the like a G six beat with nothing changed to it. This is horrendous. The song is a joke and not in a good way in any way at all. Um, David got encouraged just stealing melodies and it's horrendous. Then we got Timmy Trumpet, Vinny Vici, and Viscor with Hey Ya. Uh, I'm actually thankful this wasn't an Outcast cover track, uh, but maybe it would have been better as one. Uh, the song is short, bland, and mindless music that anyone with um, any slight musical intuition uh, shouldn't vibe with. Then we're moving into the bad category of songs that I thought were uh, not great. Again, just remember personal opinion. Personal opinion. Don't take it as gospel truth. Uh, we got Riot 10 featuring Bach Nero with Tear It Down. I just don't understand the appeal of this track. It's needlessly crass. The production is linear and just a kind of boring tune to listen to um, and like kind of loses all that hype with its flat mixing on the drops too. And so, yeah, just wasn't a fan of that one. That's our only one in bad actually is we're moving into the meh category songs I thought were meh. Uh, we've got RZRK. T uh, with Immortal. I'm saying it a lot. Is it supposed to be Reserkin? I actually don't know how to say that. I'm. This is bad for me, but uh, that artist, uh, heavy, crushing bro step with hints of rhythm that I just don't really care for. I'm sure it'll go hard at a festival, but it's more or less the same old song and dance that we've heard a million times before. Then we got Marshmallow and Sabrina Claudio with Don't Speak. Um, a chilled out trap sound that is fairly foreign for Marshmallow's discography nowadays. But uh, yeah, Sabrina gives off this kind of out of breath vocal performance the whole time. And it's a bit of an odd choice of vocal inflection. It's not a bad track by any means. It's just kind of boring. Um, and if he would have turned that last like 10, 15 seconds of the track into a whole thing, I think this could have been his best track in years. We got Martin Garrix and Dub Vision featuring Sean Ferrugia with uh, Wherever You Are. A pretty by the books commercial house track here with vocals from Sean that are very akin to the likes of Coldplay's Chris Martin. I actually really love the vocals, but the mixing on the drops just felt pretty flat to me and it neutered that kind of energy that the song had been building and building and building in the verse sections and pre-drops. So uh, yeah, just thought the track was meh. Then we've got the Armin Van Buren remix of the Seven Lions and Elenium track featuring Asdis with Not Even Love, an uplifting trance remix with a stuttering synth melody that screams classic Armin Van Buren. Um, in the end, it's a pretty fine remix, but definitely took out the kind of main builds that I loved so much from the original. They've got Kirby and Jess Ball with Thousand Sides, a pretty simple house track here with some strong kicks and an atmospheric sustains that uh, builds into each new section of the track, but uh, overall I found the song to drag on and not really go anywhere. Then we got Mr. Fiji with video games a little too much. Uh, yeah, chilled back and simplistic garage track with some fortet like sound design using these kind of glassy samples for the chops. And um, yeah, it's a very Fiji track, but doesn't really do a whole ton to make this stand out in the rest of his discography holistically. Then we got Nufori and Thirst with Glock uh, Funk with a destructive bass line that's really meant to separate itself from the other Funk tracks out there. It's got big energy, but just not a whole lot to say, personally. Uh, then we got Swedish House Mafia featuring Nikki and the Dove with Lioness. Uh, pretty boring for Swedish House Mafia standards. I felt like they were trying to recapture the magic of Ray of Solar, um, but kind of removed all the charm that made that track special, uh, making this a pretty simple house tune. So again, not bad, just not crazy. Then we got Caval with Color Baguere, Barrage, that's not Barrage, Color Baguere, uh, from the new Cosmic Crash EP. Uh, yeah, this is color based with the wet sound design that is very akin uh, to the Sharks style, uh, which is maybe intentional because Sharks is kind of taking a step back from production now, so maybe Caval's trying to enter in that niche. But that being said, the production, I think, on this track isn't as inspired as some of his other stuff, and so I didn't mind it, I just uh, think there's other better Caval tracks out there. Then we got Automate and Dea with Monument, a melodic rhythm that is bright and cheerful and happy, and it's honestly a little wild sonically. Uh, I wanted to really enjoy this one, but the harsh synths really clash with the bright production. Just a bit too much for me to really, really enjoy this one. Then we're moving into the good category songs that I thought were uh, pretty great. Uh, we've got Cinemata and Nitrix with Lightning in the Dark from the new Metamorphous debut LP from Cinemata. And uh, yeah, this is a punchy melodic dubstep track that does sound very similar to a lot of other mellow dub out there. But it's got that kind of extra kick to it that uh, kind of adds some energy that I much enjoyed and appreciated. 
Then we got Armin Hammer featuring Zila with Moments. Uh, yeah, wow, Armin Hammer with a blissful Eurodance track. Uh, it's definitely a switch up from them stylistically, and I think it worked out over well, uh, overall well. I've struggled with the kind of same sameness of their tracks as of late and was wishing for some new kind of different direction of theirs, and this was that. I'll say it's a little bit of a plain track, but hey, I didn't mind it. I kind of enjoyed it. Then we got Nitro Fun with World Wide Web, a fun throwback to Nitro's kind of core 8-bit complexro sound, but the track is just a little underwhelming. Uh, maybe I just wanted it to be kind of a one-to-one -one rendition of his 2014 sound, and it's just not that, so um, still a fun little track, but not his grand return to form that uh, maybe I wanted it to be too much. Then we got Just a Gent with three funky left field track that screams Just a Gent with his kind of classic future based trap sound design. It's a neat tune, uh, but not one of Just a Gent's best, but again, still a solid track. Then we got Blue Claire featuring Tiana Forrester, Forrester with Hold On from the new Inner Circle EP from Blue Claire. Oh, yeah, glassy deep house for lounging around, reminiscent of early disclosure days, just with a bit of a slower tempo. So if you like that kind of lounge house style, you might like this one quite a bit. Then we got Mazare and Dead Pony with Generation Gap, very much an early 2000s rock anthem, just with a constant, um, yeah, drum work, electric guitar riffs, and angsty lead vocals. Um, it does have a bit more of a focus on that drum and bass due to this being obviously a Mazare production, um, but it just sounds a lot like kind of if Paramore did an EDM kind of cover, or if there was an EDM cover of like a Paramore track, and um, I think it works great. Then we've got Petite Biscuit with Shorter Than a Night. Uh, most of the track here is this kind of loungy electro pop, but it morphs into this kind of wicked, distorted electric guitar finale that just slaps. And it's a one track that I think is a sneakily good track. Then we've got AU5 and True Feels with Edge of Your Heart, a simple commercial melodub track by AU5 standards. Um, wasn't as strong as his stuff on this last record, but I primarily found the vocals here to just not really fit in with the production style that AU5 is going for. And so again, one of the track that I really enjoyed, but I was just being just being a little, little more critical of stuff that I think is uh, good. Then we got Casbo featuring Pearl with Carry Your Name from the new The Learning of Urgency LP. Um, this alongside much of the album is just a clean, well-produced, atmospheric, progressive house track with um, fantastic vocals. There aren't any many, many big builds or mighty crashes. It kind of keeps things calm, cool, and collected, and it's beautiful. Then we got Caribou with Broke My Heart, a new genre bender from Caribou with a mix of Garage, uh, Deep House, Electronica, and Tropical House. Um, the Broke My Heart vocal sample is an instant earworm, and the production across this whole track has this kind of dual sense of weightiness and also a carefree overtone to it. Um, I can imagine the song being played at beach resorts all over the world. Then we got Oliver's with Take Me Higher, Oliver's is Ophelia debut, and uh, with a track that I was uh, kind of digging. It's got this driving beat and fun vocals with two main drops that really do hold their own, both stylistically and sonically. A bit of a fresher sound from Oliver's, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. Then we've got Dactyl featuring Alice Ivy with Wave, uh, a wonky garage cut where Dactyl manages to uh, make a kind of monotone vocal sample and turn it into a, a brilliant kind of vocal chop. Um, it's part nostalgic, part modern, and all around a, a good time. Then we've got Godlands and Lizdeck with Element. Uh, it's a short track at only two minutes long, but it's got some brilliant trap sound design happening here. Um, honestly, an entire project worth of this kind of short and punchy tracks would, would just go hard. So um, this one shocked me how much I ended up enjoying it. We got Jamie XX Treat Each Other Right, uh, the second single from his upcoming record, In Waves. Uh, Jamie XX is still in full form with intense instrumentation and brilliant sampling. Another garage kind of house tune that more so leans into the garage side of things, but I'm not as strong as I think the last single was, but I still think this is quite great. Then we got Elderbrook with Shallow Water, an intimate progressive house track with a simple kind of chord structure and ethereal vocals. Um, this is kind of just prime Elderbrook with um, an incredible mixing, so enjoyed that one quite a bit. We got Justin Hawks, Bensley, and Camarion with Carry the Fire. Uh, really love all the artists involved here for a huge triple collab. And um, yeah, I I think I was thinking this was going to be way above and like beyond the norm. Um, but I think individually, this is kind of just a, a great track for each of these three artists. I'm being very critical of this stuff. But um, yeah, I, I, I think the track is the kind of long building movements that have extended drops that is really solid D&B. Um, and so I just think I had unjust expectations where I imagine this to be like the dnb song of the year um it's it's not in my opinion i do think it's a great track though so go listen to that um if you enjoy some dnb 
Then we got Charlie XCX with Talk Talk from the new Brat LP, uh, the EDM record of the year, according to some people. Uh, but yeah, this is a fun record with easily danceable grooves, great vocal performances, and incredible mixing. Uh, this track in particular is wrapped in the synth sustain that just kind of gives the whole time, uh, giving this track like a kind of bright and cheery atmosphere. I only have that constant kick, kind of bring the energy, bam, bam, bam. Blast of a track, super fun. Then we've got Camouflage featuring Shima with Intuition, another vibey garage house cut from Camouflage with airy production and bright vocal chops. A little more reserved on the baseline side of things, but I think that makes the track feel a lot more lighter, uh, which is a style from Camouflage I quite enjoy. Then we got Elohim with Didn't Sign Up For This, a really unique and fresh sounding like kind of garage, trap, bass fusion of a track. Um, it's got these kind of beautiful strings and then haunting chords that all play off each other for this uh, pretty special sounding track and one that I think is quite unique in the um, musical landscape of things, so... Then we got Kei Trinata featuring Childish Gambino with Witchy from the new Timeless LP out now from Kei Trinata. Um, some funky house kind of alternative R&B production from Kei Trinata with fantastic vocals from Childish here. Um, this is one of the better cuts from the record, and so if you want to feel for what the whole record is holistically, um, give this track a spin. I think it's fantastic. And finally, the number one song of the week is in Standout, a song that I thought was a cut above the rest, and it is indeed Porter Robinson, Russian Roulette. Uh, grand, building, intimate, uh, this track kind of has it all for Porter Robinson's third single from his upcoming Smile uh, record, and yeah, it's energetic, packs a punch, and has these Euro dance-like drops that uh, complements uh, the more down-to-earth verses and bridge sections, um, all in which culminates into this kind of huge finale and uh, quite funny outro. So, uh, if you haven't already heard it, yeah, please go listen to Russian Roulette. It's not like Porter Robinson's other stuff for sure, and I really enjoyed it. So, uh, but yeah, other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media. Let me know what you think of any and all songs in the comment section below, and I uh, will see you guys in another video.